Uh, he's a BTEC specialist, assessor and verifier with a vast array of subject exposure, passionate about teaching and learning and assessment of part of any college and observation team undertaking MA leadership at the Institute of Education to help you out aspiration. Thank you very much. Um, having listened to a, a lot of things today, um, it's kind of set a perfect platform for me and what I wanted to present now. It was launched with um, the whole principle that we should have um, things that take a little little effort and have big impacts and that's hopefully what one of my, uh, I, well, this particular idea will have on hopefully your, your teaching and the learning of your students. Um, furthermore, I've seen a lot of teachers who work very hard and we try and look about efficiency and how we need to streamline what it is that we actually do. Um, now this is the part of my presentation where you may switch off because I've got to have an apology because um, I wanted to give something to the teaching and learning community that they can take away from today. Um, I'm going to kind of dangle a carrot and leave you with something that hopefully will be a great idea, but unfortunately at this stage it's just a prototype. Um, cut a long story short, we've got Ofsted in at the minute. I'm supposed to have a big weekend of sort of developing this particular tool that I'm using. I'm going to display uh, to you today, um, but unfortunately it's not ready to go and I'll be working on it over Christmas. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is assessment. Not particularly, well, we all know what the importance of assessment is. Uh, I don't want to bore you with the types of assessment because you know they're vast and varied. But specifically about how we measure progress and we look at tutor's assessment and self-assessment as well. Um, some of you may, uh, this may resonate with you, learning power, building <coughs> learning power. Guy Claxton uh, spoke about how we can get learners more independent. And that's something that is at the centre of what it is that I'm going to present to you. Don't worry, we'll eventually get there. Um, so it, the key principles are uh, up on the board. Feel free to go and look at building learning power. So my question was how are we actually prepare independent learners? Now I've done a lot of work at Reading College to make our learners more independent. We've developed the learner cycle, we've got the learner's blackboard, and trying to get them more engaged in their own uh, personal development because essentially they need to invest in themselves. Um, I did tweet about the homework club. I also saw, I saw something on Twitter, it was a few weeks ago, about a 12 year old who set up a homework club. It went viral, everyone loved it. So it's key that people are out there um, and that people do want to, you know, do want to learn. So how do we do that? Now there's some examples of how you can set learning aims and objectives and how we can measure progress of our learners. What I've hopefully done is squash all of this into a uh, neat little tool uh, which is called Bitesight. Now this is what I want for you to take away from uh, today. I'm going to show you something that I've worked on uh, with a member of my staff um, and also a learner actually to collaborate. So uh, this is Bitesight. This is something that uh, we've developed. Um, I kind of had the idea, worked with a member of my team um, and it's actually a learner who's in the program before me on this particular topic. So what Bitesight is, it's a tool to track learning aims and objectives. So if you're a student, you can decide what you're currently studying. So for example, um, if you're a learner, you can type in, uh, let's go with market segmentation. Uh, if you hit enter, you then get a pre-prepared list of learning aims and objectives. There's conditional formatting behind this, but it's pre-generated for a learner to go over. If you want to have a look at it, they can look at the definitions, understand, apply, and they can tick off what it is that they think they've done and they can share it with the teacher as well. We'll quickly go back to the main slide again uh, so you can just have a look at some of the other functions of it. Let me go back. Okay, so uh, now this time around we're going to go with a leader. So I want to try and show to you the transferability of this cross subject. So um, you heard it in the uh, opening but I spoke about uh, a background in uh, sport and PE. Uh, this time we are the teacher. So we're not just going to get one set of pre-prepared learning names or objectives. We're going to go with coaching styles and you're a leader. How many students do you have in your classroom? Someone shout a number. How many people do you have in your group? Five. Twelve, thirty-two. Oh, okay, I'm going to go with twelve because uh, just to make my own life easy on this one. Uh, you hit go. You've then got twelve sets of individually prepared learning names and objectives. Now you'll notice each of these are automatically generated for you and they're each individualised per learner. Let's just quickly, I don't know whether this is set to a printer, but if we went with Control P, uh, load a preview, you've then got a series of learning names and objectives which your learners can, you can, sorry, you can print off, you can hand out and they've got individually tailored learning aims and objectives for that particular session. It's not just about um, you having something to measure them, it's for them about having something to measure themselves with as well. Now, this is in the position of uh, means refinement, um, but there's a back end database of over 200 learning names and objectives behind each one, which took a whole lot of legwork. 
Um, but hopefully it will be a tool that you can, in the new year, launch and use with your learners as well. Thank you.